There's basically four kinds of positioning in CSS, absolute, relative, float, and fixed. In this lesson, we're going to talk about absolute positioning. Here on the screen, we have four content boxes. The outer one has this border around it, and it's this dark blue. And contained within that are three absolutely positioned columns of text. Each of these is a different color for illustration purposes, and they're positioned using absolute positioning. So let's take a look at that in the source document. Here we have an XHTML document, and here's our content boxes in the XHTML. The outer box is this outer div, and contained within it are three boxes with text in them. And these are named first, second, and third, and the outer box is named outer, and this is with ID selectors. So here's the CSS, and in this case, we've put it inside the document in a style container. And that's just for illustration purposes. Again, I would normally put this in an external style sheet. Here we have the outer box, and you'll notice that it has this position relative. And the purpose of this is to qualify it as a containing block to contain the other positioned elements. Absolute positioning requires a containing block. If you don't provide it one, it will use the outer block of the document, the outer border of the uh, window space in your browser will become that containing block. And so in this case, we wanted to provide a containing block. And in order for this to qualify as a containing block, it needs to be a positioned element. And that means it needs to have a position property. And that property needs to have a value of either relative or absolute. The default position property is called static. And you'll rarely ever use that. And that simply is exactly the same as having no position at all. So if I save this and reload this document, you'll see that these positioned elements will now be positioned relative to the outer frame of the browser. I'll go ahead and put that back and save it and reload in the browser. And there we have it. So in order for this outer block to qualify as a containing block for positioned elements, it needs to have this position relative or it needs to be position absolute. We're using position relative here because if you use position relative without any actual positioning, in other words, it doesn't have a top or a left property, that makes it behave the same as if it had no positioning, but it still qualifies because it has this. It makes it qualify as a containing block for the absolute positioned elements. Now, the absolute positioned elements here, we have three of them. And they have a top property and a left property. In this case, they're both 0. In the second one, the left is 250 pixels. In the bottom one, the left is 500 pixels. And this positions them absolutely relative to the containing block. So the word absolute simply means that the coordinates are absolute relative to the boundaries of the containing block. But they're still relative to that reference point. The containing block provides reference points for the absolute positioning. Each of these elements is exactly 250 pixels wide. We've provided a width of 220 and padding of 15 pixels all around. So if you add up the left and the right here, you get 30 pixels. And you add that to the 220, you get 250 pixels. So the total width of the element is 250 pixels. And so I positioned the second one 250 pixels from the left boundary of the containing block. And I've positioned the third one 500 pixels, which is 2 columns over from the left boundary of the containing block. And that's what gives us this positioning here. So we have 0, we have 250 pixels, and we have 500 pixels. This gives us this absolute positioning. So there's one more thing I want to show you. If I move one of these blocks, I'm going to move the middle one over 50 pixels here. I want to show you what happens. Make that 300 pixels over from the left boundary. And I'll save it and reload. And you'll notice that now this right part of it is no longer visible because it's hiding under this third block. The reason for this is the order in which they happen in the XHTML. Because this second block is before the third block, it is actually underneath it in that third dimension. It's a two-dimensional document, but there is a phantom third dimension called the Z index, which is the property that defines which elements will appear above other elements if they happen to overlap. If I were to move this block and move it down here under the third block, we'll go ahead and save that. Because they're absolutely positioned, it'll still be in the same place, but it will now appear over this element 
on the screen. Now if I don't want to actually move it, I'm going to hit undo a couple of times there, there we go. Instead, I can specify a z-index. So now they're in the original order, and I'm going to specify a z-index here in the style, z-index1. Any z-index will all will work, because the other ones don't have one, so that puts them in the zero z-index. I'll save this and reload, and now it's still over it. And if I take that out, you'll notice it'll go back to behind. Go ahead and reload over here, and now it's behind. So you can specify a z-index, and if you specify a z-index for all of them, you can actually control what's in front of what. The higher numbered z-indexes appear in front of the lower numbered z-indexes. So that's absolute positioning, and those are the things that you need to know about it in order to use it in your documents.